Yeah. Keep this too hard. Oh, we're back. We're back. We're back. Yeah. We're back. Welcome back. Edit again. This is podcast hey. number two for tonight. Oh. I'm feeling good. How about you? I'm at it. We're here. I'm feeling great. Welcome. If you're on Let's YouTube, welcome. If you're on SoundCloud, um, both of them are available. Uh, we're trying to do a bunch of lunchtime uploads. Lunchtime uploads. So uploads. maybe we'll start making this a regular thing. We have a podcast every day at lunchtime. I think that'd be cool, really easy. And you guys can listen to it while you're on your break, at school, at work, whatever you want to do. Whatever you want. And Taking a poop. Taking a listen poop. Listen to a podcast. Listen to the podcast because it will come out much smoother. Wow. It'll come out and it'll, you know, never mind. All right. What's today's podcast topic? Music. Today we're talking today about... Today we're talking about music. Today we're talking about Bry Bars. on the track. DJ Bry on the track. DJ. If you don't know, if you're not in our close friend group, they call me DJ Bry. DJ because I always Bry. got the hot beats. He's got... This phone right here, it's always packing that heat of the hot beats. Packing the heat of the hot beats. Bars. Lunchtime upload. 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 Roll the intro. Boom, Dude, we don't we need, have an intro. We should have an intro. Let's have an intro. There will be an intro made. We should do more production for our luploads <laughs> our luploads dude loads. that's great a lupload <laughs> <laughs> lunch upload the lupload we need we need a we need an actual name for the lunchtime uploads like it's not just oh it's a podcast it's like it's a lupload a lupload hashtag lupload gang lup-load. if you feel on lupload put it down below <sighs> if you're not post up uh, some uh, some ideas right <clears throat> Gotta get hyped. Anyways, today is music. Music is like literally become such a big part of our everyday lives. I think just this 21st century, 2018, brother, music is booming, doing better than ever. I think there's a lot of good music coming out. Uh, I think it's really prevalent right now that hip hop is really taking over. You look at the charts of anywhere that hip hop's all over it. Um, Big thing. Like, uh, I don't know what song it was, but it was a song off Post Malone's Stony album. It was on the Billboard Hot 100 for 72 consecutive weeks, beating Michael Jackson's Thriller. It was what? His, his, I don't know, I, it was probably Fall Apart, I Fall Apart, because I think that was the one that was on the, like, the longest, but it was on 72, 72 weeks? consecutive weeks. So back to back, on top I don't know 10. if it was on the top or if it was just in the charts, but the previous record was set by michael jackson for thriller so that just shows you like king of pop and then post malone so it's like it shows you kind of the era we're in that hip-hop's really taken over and that all that type of music is really just popular dude so, yeah I've, I've i listen to a lot of podcasts and um at least mul- at least a couple times in every podcast no matter what it is hip-hop is mentioned mm-hmm. um because it's Taking over the music industry. Um, what I think I, I don't crazy. like, I feel like it's ever since Migos came out with Culture, the first one. Ever since then, the word culture is thrown around so much. And I notice it a ton in the media classes I'm taking currently. Unless this was a word that was used before, but I feel like I never heard people use it as much. And now in both of the cl- classes that I'm taking, everyone's like, oh, is it just the culture? Is it this? I'm like, oh my like. There are, yeah, there are words that every yeah. couple of years that pop up and then they, like, stick for and a every, while. like, I get distracted in class because they say, oh, is it the culture? And all I think is, like, the memes, like, oh, do it for the culture. And then I just think Migos and I just, and I'm just, you know, I'm not even, I'm not in class anymore. <laughs> um, I'm in an album. Um, so let's, let's start from the beginning. I think music is really big for both of us just because of how we grew up and what our interests were. Yeah. Do you want to go first? Um. I grew up um, first half of my life in Atlanta, and coming from Atlanta, that's obviously super big with hip hop. Um, most of my friends uh, were into hip hop and stuff. Um, I went to a school that was um, exactly half white, half black, and then a lot of um, Hispanic and Latino. And I think that's why I'm super like. Not, I don't know, culture. See, cultured. There yeah. you go. There's the word. I love everybody's type of of life that they choose. Um, I don't know. So I, gr- I grew up like really diverse. And yeah. then when moving yeah. up to this part of New York, it's a lot 
less diverse of people um, because we're almost a Kanata. So, um, oh, Canada. Yeah, Canada. Um, I was like, what? <laughs> Canada. But I think I grew Canadian. up really cultured and diverse into music and stuff. So I grew up loving hip hop. I loved um, country. specifically, yeah, country and metal because I'm a drummer and I love playing like really intricate, you know, um, songs and uh, beats and stuff on the set. I started playing, set. technically I started playing drums ever since I was like just a few years old because I used to like, I used to pick up a couple of pens and tap on everything and I'd get in so much trouble for tapping in class, in school, in in mom's car, she'd yell at me. Mm -hmm. um, so music has like literally been not only like me absorbing it and like listening to the content and stuff, but like I actually produced content. Like I have posters yeah. in my room of uh, old gigs that we used to play with a couple of bands that Here's another one um, that I used to be in, um, yeah. and we did we did pretty well. And I was in like actually involved in the music industry for probably four years, which is very weird because I'm only 21 now. So like all of this was happening when I was 14 to ab about like 17, 18 ish, yeah. and that's when I started to kind of get away from that because a bunch of situation things happened with the band that was in and everything i still play drums um but uh yeah that's my music life yeah that's kind of what i was getting at for you is the, the main thing of just playing drums and being about the music that way um the way i kind of came up was my dad uh started i think when he was like maybe 18 19 20 down there. Totally forgot purple the things have been sitting here forever, man. Have well a Powerade break. Um, These are dusty. Wow. Yeah, your dad. Uh, you my dad to? started as like a side job to make some money during school and stuff, uh, being a DJ. Or if you don't know what DJ means, it means disc jockey because they used to jockey the discs. Did he actually start off with? Um, um, I know he, he said he had a turntable. I don't know if when he started that's what they were playing, or if that was just kind of like a side piece to the whole ensemble if you will you know it's funny um, side note these drinks have been there since import lines wow why are they like so wet well it's water <laughs> not like that but like i know i didn't just spill this much on me but it was just like all like built up around the ring did you shake it i don't know what you did i didn't think so but it's like all over me now um um yeah damn. so my dad started as a dj and so for me growing up, there was always music like playing around the house that was of different varieties because of the diversity that he dealt with going to parties, weddings, any sort of event playing all different types of music, you know, doing like the cha-cha slide to doing like formal stuff for weddings. And like, you know, you kind of can put those together like the, like, you know, whatever. Um, so that's kind of how I started. I just got into music that way. And eventually I started helping out at some of these events with my dad. So I would learn how to operate the equipment he was using to play music. And I guess that kind of got my, my taste started for music. And then when I became of age. And at this point, we didn't, we didn't hang out, right? No. Okay, this is before not, because yeah. I, don't, I don't ever remember like being like, oh, my dad's off doing dj thing maybe mm. a couple times with you yeah, but maybe once or twice that. but um, it was definitely when he was our age right yeah like he was going heavy at that yeah he was doing okay. that like 18 19 20 um i remember he also like said there's just a little side note here like people would always talk about having like a paper route he said like that was like one of the first things you know where you ride your bike and you throw a paper onto people's thing lawns yeah like i don't know that's just such like an old school job thing but um so second part of my like music, I guess, tastes is when I was in, I think, seventh or eighth grade is when they start letting you be able to start being in like band. Is that right? Or is it earlier than that? I personally started in fifth grade. Yeah, I think. Yeah, it's fifth grade. So I, I started playing the trumpet. So I was in the, the band at school. Um, I was mainly in the symphonic band, which is not as good band. There's symphonic hey, in concert. I was in that one too. But I mean, you know, I wasn't in the one above. 
because I hate reading sheet music and I love just flipping playing. my sticks while playing and the teacher hated that. Yeah. But I was like Rebel. I was like, ma'am, I can I can do the entire song while flipping my sticks. Like watch and then she's like, Nope, you can't do that. I'm like yeah. Screw you, I'm going to metal. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> so Jordan wasn't in band for and a I was long. Like, I don't even remember him being in band. But I was in band ever since when you can start to all the way through my senior year. Just because like I quit there was a we started. multiple times where I was like, Oh, do I still want to keep doing this? But there it was mainly just that you kinda of build a friend group and I just thought, you know, why not stick with it? So it was good. It was a time of uh, a different time of my life. Um I wouldn't say I was good, but I wasn't bad. Uh but that that's a whole other story that I don't think anyone. Do you wants tell him what you played? Trumpet. Oh, you did. Oh, okay. Trumpet, the one that has three buttons, not that's trombone. It's not trombone. My dad played trombone. Oh yeah. My mom dad played, was also a DJ. My mom played clarinet. Why didn't you say that? My dad was a DJ too. Connections. Yeah, it's very weird. Um. But yeah. My, one of my uncles was in a band. He played drums. Um, and I remember that I really wanted to get into drums because I'd go over to his place whenever we'd go to visit him and I'd like bang on his drum set and I was like, Oh, I should do drums, but I didn't. So RIP. Bro, I used to love giving me songs and then I just played on my drum set. I'd always be like, yo, play yo, this song. Yo, play this and then, right like, now. I would try to like, there's a couple times I'd have him try to teach me and it just didn't. Oh. Oh, All right, you, hold YouTube on. people, you're you're down for a second. We're gonna get you fixed. Um, anyways, what? Um, hold on, just grab the battery. So, what was I saying? When I, you used to tell me to play. Oh. So, like I would. Uh, let's get that framed up right. Is that good? Yeah, that's fine. Um. What I would pretty much you would just try to teach me, and it just didn't ever work out well. Because you'd be like, well, you just kind of do this. And I couldn't get, like, I don't know, what do you call it? Just, like, a roll? Yeah. I couldn't get the roll, like, having the stick kind of, like, what do you have it, like, kind of rock in your hand? Yeah, you let it I bounce. couldn't do that. I hold the stick too much and, like, Yeah, people are too stiff when you're trying to teach them. Roll. It's almost trying to learn how to drive stick. Not even close. All right, maybe not close. Because I learned how to drive stick in, like. 20 yeah. minutes. Okay. Maybe it's different. Well, I think it, you, for drums, I think you have to be born with it. Like, if you don't have rhythm in the first place, then you're just like... Wow. You hear that? I don't like, have rhythm. But a different type of rhythm, you know what I mean? I mean, like, I could read sheet music and I could tap my foot. Like, I was Even so though, into the the beats of music, I never know lyrics. I only know how the drum and bass go. I mean, I feel like the one thing with you is uh, you were, like... Because I would always get yelled at for not tapping my foot, but I would still be playing on, like, on beat and on rhythm. But for the drums, like, you're tapping your foot's probably, like, the bass drum, right? Yeah, that would be you're the You're always case. keeping... Because you're, you're, like, the timekeeper of yeah. the group. Right? You know what really made me mad when I was in school band? Mm. All of the other like drummers... Things. Well, that and all of the other drummers had terrible keeping consistent on the beat like somehow i just what they would know get off how, beat. yeah they would still slowly start going faster or eventually just drop down slower i never really like lost that and i i need to get back into drumming more um i'm trying i'm actually trying to sell my electric kit but i have a i have my real kit i'm not selling my real kit that's the first one i got when i was like i don't even know cool. 11 years old or something but it. 10 years old something but yeah drums yeah. is 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 my thing i mean so that's like our background that that's our background for music um moving on to today so i guess like well actually before today this thing sitting over here in the corner that helped a lot of our music love it's a subwoofer i got a big subwoofer box over in the corner of my room right now that has two 12s in it and a very nice box that I got for a great price from one of my dad's friends from work. We had that in my first car. This and season. the sound that that thing makes is like... It was perfect. It's not annoying. That's the thing. It's like perfect bass. It doesn't make your car rattle. You're not pissing off other people. You can't even hear it outside of the car, which is great. Yeah. 
I don't know how. I think it's just the way that the box is made. But it's not meant to be, like, crazy loud. And I think we really started getting into music, at least together. And, like, we're like, oh, yeah, this is the song that I like through just listening to music on the, in the car. Yeah. Being able to hear the different levels was key. Yeah, especially with that thing. Because um, you had a good head unit and you had that. So, like, everything came together real that nice. Was real good. And then I... <laughs> I like half put them in the the WX, and then I was just like, no, this is stupid. I didn't I didn't put the box in my car. I put in like one sub in the back, and then like made my own yeah, thing, no, and it was, was stupid. Terrible. It was terrible. Yeah, and then like sometimes it would work, and so I don't know how I got that car wrong, but my first car was like perfect, never had problems. So yeah, you know, I don't know, never know. Um, but yeah, that was that was kind of like the intermission of like when we started like um getting into music together yeah um i think one thing that really helped was getting spotify being able to have unlimited amount of music um versus like paying for it or like pirating it or something um and then i really put off for a while getting spotify premium is it premium yeah Yeah. that's premium um but we kind of found a way around it and ended up paying for it anyways. But yeah, that was, I think, a really big kind of change in the way I look at music. Because now, it don't, it's almost a good and a bad thing. Um, without it, I think you appreciate certain songs more because you only have a couple songs that you can really, you want to spend that money on. So you get songs that you just really like. Where now it's just so much music that you just kind of listen to everything and you're just like, you don't appreciate each song as much. But you have all of them, so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Spotify is like the first thing I do every single time I get into my car is get my phone ready with Spotify, whether that be music or podcast. Songs on songs on songs. Like, I can just keep going. Like, that was all of them. (laughs) And (laughs) I keep going. Oh, that's the end. But, like, I mean, that's just songs I've saved. So it's like at any time of the day, I can listen to any of those songs. And a lot of those are, like, my favorite songs. So, obviously, I'm always listening to something that I enjoy. Um, I always, I found out, like, recently, too, that I really like kind of waiting and anticipating new releases. Uh, I follow a lot of, like, producers and other artists and just... I think you like the, like, behind-the-scenes history type part of music. And the... What is it? I like seeing it come together. The the Genius Channel or whatever. Yeah, if any of you guys are on Spotify, you know, like the behind the lyrics that are done by Genius. Genius has a YouTube channel where they do interviews with artists that break down the lyrics, the meanings behind it. They have uh, interviews with the producers that made the beats to certain songs, and the producers go on how they went about making that beat and then how it got used by that artist for whatever song it is. So I love seeing that. Um, I think it's really cool just to see someone's creative process and the mindset of how they go about creating something. So Jordan's getting it for the gram because I got to get, I got to remind, I got to remind the people the lunchtime uploads is now going to be a thing. Lunchtime uploads for it's, it's going to be tough. But we're gonna do it. We'll have to stockpile a lot because of uploads. we can do uh, SoundCloud and YouTube and go hard. It'd be kind of dope. Obviously, it'd be better quality-wise to have everything scheduled. But it'd be kind of dope if it, we ever get to a point where we live stream like a, a noon podcast. So it's fun. like at this time of the day, tune in, and we're talking about something for a certain amount of time. Yeah. It'd be cool to do a couple times, but obviously production quality would be better for just something in post-production. Um, so, yeah, music. Um, let's talk about, let's name like a couple of genres that we think are our top three at the moment. So, you want to go like back and forth? A couple genres? We, yeah, music genres. Or do you, we well, want to collectively decide? Do we want to do like artists? Because genres just like hip-hop, country, and like EDM unless unless we're I mean, like sticking to hip hop because I think we've established I think that hip hop is definitely hip hop for both of us is our favorite so I guess we can stick with hip hop and talk about our top three 
Top three or top five at the moment? What's that your, is very loud. What's your favorite artist making making some beats right now? This isn't even a question we all know. Making beats? Or you just mean that uh, makes I mean, songs? Just, just, you know, producing songs. Favorite artist of all time at the moment, Ty Dolla Sign. That man kills it. I love everything he does. I like that he doesn't consider himself a rapper, even though he raps. Um, he's He's a singer, you know, and I think what's super cool is when you look at, like, the Migos and how they throw in ad-libs, Ty Dolla Sign in songs that he is in, there's, like, those... Like I guess you could call them ad libs in the background, but it's more just like kind of filler in the background of him doing different little singing kind of things, throwing in some spice throughout the song. I just like everything he does with his music, the whole way it comes together. It's always gets you in a good vibe. Yeah, it's very melodic. Um, obviously he has some bangers that go really hard, but I think there's just a lot with him that I'm always just kind of vibing with. And it gets you. Get that little shoulder rock. Like, this is my go-to move when I'm really vibing with someone. It's just, okay. You know, you're just feeling it. And I get that a lot with him. It's, he's just, like, 10 out of 10, number one. Any song I hear him in, like, he can kill it. Any song I'm listening to, I can picture when he could come into that song and just kill it. So, like, songs that he's not in, I wish he was in. All the songs he's in, he just kills his part. And whew, just could go yeah, on and on. on. He's just one. the best. You? Um, I've been spending almost 99% of my time lately listening to Logic. Mm -hmm. And I would say Logic's definitely my number two right now. Yeah. So my thing with him is that, like, I've been almost digging more into the story of him and, like, all the stuff that he actually raps about. And what's cool is, like... He's got a cool story. Is... Every every single song that you listen to, and some people hate every single song that you listen to from him, has like an actual deep meaning to mm -hmm. it. And some people are like, yo, like that's stupid. Like, why don't you just rap about like going to the club and like yeah. you know? Because like everybody else I like does that. The fact that it's it's different. He has a meaning behind his stuff. Every and I like that. Um, to kind of put a timestamp on this video, there's a. Like, his most recent album was Young Sinatra 4. And I remember I was at work unloading one of the trucks of produce stuff, just putting it out. So I'm just in the back room, headphones on, just all day just working. And I remember I listened through that album. And the thing that I found the coolest about that is listening through it, I felt like I just told a story and I learned more about him just by listening to something he just made of music, that you just learn more about his story. Especially the last song where he does that kind of last call and he talks about... Going from, like, he puts, being broke and living in someone's basement, like, putting a year to, like, go hard at it and, like, eventually got signed to Def Jam and just the whole thing. Like, it was really cool listening to his story. Yeah, I think through music. my favorite album lately from him has been The Incredible True Story, which came out. When did this come out? Isn't that, out? like, his second or third album? Yeah, this was... On, uh, at least on Spotify. 20, 2015, and... I started getting heavy into him, like, just this year, and I'm actually going back through his old albums that would have came out before I started, like, really listening to him. And what's funny is I remember hearing his name, like, years ago, and I was just like, you know, you know it was the first thing I thought, which is really stupid, it was just like, uh, I was like, oh, like, oh, it's just another, like, white rapper, or whatever, blah, 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 and I was like, oh, whatever. Whatever, yeah. Like, kind of, like, it's kind of like Eminem, there. just like, you know, yeah. whatever. But then, like, just this year, like, came back, and I was like, wait, that's the one that, like, a couple years ago, I was just like, eh, I was like, it's okay, yeah. but it's like, whatever. And now I'm like, I think maybe it's because I'm older now, and I can, you know, I like deeper meanings of, like, songs and stuff, and you start understanding more things. Yeah. So, like, going back to that was just like, like damn like now i love all the stuff and like i literally could just live off of all of his albums and then like i'd be okay so yeah i know for me it's like when i know for me when like bobby tarantino 2 came out that was his first album i really listened to like i listened to the everybody single that was getting played on the radio everywhere like so i, like, I heard that and i was kind of like piqued my interest so i listened to bobby tarantino 2 that was amazing and dude i didn't even know that the suicide hotline song was him neither did i i, didn't I feel even know. like I didn't connect it. it's his same voice but i feel like 
he's kind of got like a universal sound where you can just put him with a lot of different elements and like different genres and stuff but i listened to that album i attempted to go back and listen to some older stuff still wasn't sure how i felt but i loved the one album then young sinatra 4 came out i listened to that loved that and then i kind of just start putting him on shuffle and listening to stuff that's his older stuff um and still really enjoying it um i would say just because you mentioned logic and i mentioned ty and that was kind of like my one and two um almost tied for second right now would be post malone which some people are kind of like oh you know it's just another kind of white rapper type thing and there's you know he's so basic but i think his sound is more unique and i like him a lot like stoney and beer bongs and bentley's two very good albums that as we talked about earlier were on the charts for a while um both of those albums i can kind of just put on and listen through and enjoy most of it without wanting to leave and like go on to something else yeah um i think my number two lately has been gonna mm. like his stuff um i he's another um rapper from atlanta that has come up like like super super fast in the last like year year and a half from i know like, he's from here that album he did was with little baby is he signed to qc also because I know Lil Baby's on QC. I don't know. Because obviously that whole group is like pretty much just Atlanta rappers because they got Migos, they got Lil Baby, they got some, yeah, they got Yachty. Comes, they're probably have Young Thug coming out there. Um, but, but yeah, he's another one that has been coming up lately. Um, and I, I don't know, I kind of like his sound. He talks about... Also, more more realish type things. Uh, he talks a lot about. I feel like everybody talks about their the phone is very loud. Sorry, I, I just had to say. I feel it. like everybody talks about their you know their come up or whatever. But if you can talk about specifics within that and make it real, mm-hmm. that's when it's like that's when you know I'm I'm into it. If you just talk about it like you know one time or whatever, it's like yeah everybody everybody has a come up somehow. I mean obviously because now you're famous and everything. Yeah. But and also famous is kind of a weird way to you know consider if you're famous or not um i guess in the hip-hop world yes famous um yeah you know and but yeah i think he's one of the ones that i like lately and i feel almost the same way with post malone like you put a post malone song on like you could automatically tell like oh this is post malone you put a gunna song on like i don't know who makes his beats but like whoever makes his beats is like you can tell it's about to come up um it's about to show up with you know him him on the song so you know you know yeah um but yeah i think do you beside okay so let's switch it up besides hip-hop what's another what's another genre that you actually have been into recently. if you don't have one i got one that i've been into recently um jeez uh let's see um another genre i really haven't been into another genre honestly i listen to just a lot of hip-hop um like i used to be into country and sometimes some country songs will come on and i'll let them play through but it just doesn't give me that same feeling yeah it's spitting bars something i've been into lately has been um I, I mean at work i listen to a lot of serious xm and i've been on to channel 53 is chill music and I've been listening to a lot of, like, chill EDM. I don't even know what you want to call it. I think it is okay. chill EDM. And that's something that has been spiking a lot of um, thoughts for me or, like, just um, inspirational stuff that I want to use for these videos and everything. Um, but, yeah, I think, like, chill music has been, like, like when I listen to that, I'm just like, oh, I get I get um, ideas for videos and stuff. Yeah. So. I remember... Uh... I, there was a time I used to be into that too that just like I mean just that kind of like chill hop category of kind of loggy style music every once in a while I'll throw that on just to kind of get that little feeling like your life is a vlog you're like you're living life like Casey Neistat and just like uh, you know just woo <laughs> woo woo yay life well you got <laughs> you have positive it just soundtrack. it makes you feel like yes yes all right, we're about to hit 30 minutes. 
Thank you guys for joining us for another lunchtime upload um, for the podcast. Hope you had a great lunch on your afternoon break. Or whenever you listen to it. Thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace. Peace.